Hey, what's happening guys? Today we are going to take an in-depth look at this oscilloscope. This is the O1 XDS 2102A. This is a 12-bit high-resolution scope, 100 megahertz bandwidth, 1 giga sample per second. And it has just this big, beautiful display. This is 8 inches diagonally. And if you guys watched my uh, first look at this, you got to see it compared to another scope and see just how big that difference is. This, I mean, this, I mean, there's my hand. I mean, this is a, this is a significant scope and it is just really, really nice. Now, we're going to go over some of the features that this scope has that takes it a step above your basic entry level consumer scopes. Now, I know that the 1054Z or Z as some call it is out there and I know that you can hack it and get every feature in the known universe but that's a little underhanded this you can get legally and you can get it for a very reasonable price I've seen this scope now selling on eBay for about 389 that's a really good price for a powerful scope one of the first things I want to talk about is probably one of the most maligned features in oscilloscopes, and that is the auto set function. This scope has a really nice auto set that is somewhat intelligent. So I'm going to turn on the function generator here. Now look at that. We have obviously a wave on the screen that we really can't see. I'm going to turn off channel 2. We're not using it. And I'm going to press the auto set button. And I don't know if you can hear it, but I can hear some relays clicking. And it says detect sign or triangle on channel one. And it gives us that very nice display. So that is a very cool feature. I like the, that it can detect the, not just that the frequency of the wave is there, but the type of wave and it can apply the appropriate display to it. Kind of working alongside the auto set is the auto scale function. And the auto scale is a really useful function and it helps users carry out a quick test of the input signal. It's applied to all follow-up signals automatically even if the signals change. And what it does is it enables the scope to set up trigger mode, voltage, division, and time scale according to the type of wave. So what we've got going on here is a 100 kilohertz sine wave, uh, 10 volts peak to peak. And I'm going to press the auto scale button. Now we have a couple different modes here. We have vertical and horizontal, horizontal only and vertical only. We will do both and we'll turn it on. See how quickly it did that? Now we can also determine whether or not we want multi-period waveform or just two periods on the screen. We'll go with the multi-period for this now. And if I change the waveform like for instance we're at 100 uh, K right now there is one meg and you see how it is automatically changing now we're scrolling down down to 100 yeah 100 back to 100 kilohertz and if we take it even lower there's 75 kilohertz and that auto scale just keeps everything in check great for first-time users and you'll see it's working here because we have the little blinking a for auto scale I'll turn it off for now but that is a great feature all right now let's talk about dual waveform math this is another thing that you're gonna find a very limited uh, adaptation of in your basic entry-level scopes uh, but this scope has a lot of great stuff going on here so we have our dual waveform math. Factor one, we can do channel one or two. We can do uh, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. There's our factor two. Our vertical divisions and our volts per division. Very cool. We also have a fast Fourier transform. What channel you want it on, what type of window you want. 
You see we have Hamming, Rectangle, Blackman, Hanning, not the same as Hamming, Kaiser, and Bartlett. And then we have user functions, including integrals, differentials, square roots. This is some definitely very advanced waveform math. And that's very cool to find in a lower price scope. That's what I'm liking about this scope, other than the giant screen, is the advanced features that would normally be in a $1,000 plus scope. O1 has uh, brought it out so that we can have it in a more consumer price scope. Now, one thing that I forgot to mention is right here, the directory button that brings up our filtering. And you see we have high pass, low pass, band pass, and pan reject filtering. That is pretty cool. I'm really impressed with that. You know, this isn't a tutorial on how to use an oscilloscope. It's more it's just an exploration of this one. So we're, we're, we're skipping over a lot of stuff, and I'm just trying to hit on the points that bring out in this scope. And if we bring up our trigger menu, you can see we have our, our trigger types here. Right now we're on edge. We can choose video, pulse, slope, run, windows, timeout, nth edge. We can choose between our single type, our alternate trigger, logic triggers, and bus triggers including RS-232, I2C, SPI, and CAN bus. Now I've set up a little um, I2C demonstration. Let's take a look at that. All right, so we'll take a look at one of the uh, bus decoding functions of the scope, the I2C bus. I've just got an Arduino Uno here, and it is running just a little program printing the uh, scope model here, XDS2102A, on this OLED. I have uh, got my got my probe messed up here. I've got channel one attached to my data, and channel two is attached to the clock. So let's take a look up here at the scope and you'll be able to see the decode going down. Now there's not a lot being put on there at the moment, but you can see we can press the display button down here and the format we have is hex. We can also change it to ASCII. And you're seeing our ASCII codes in there. We can change through the various bus types of RS-232, I2C, SPI, and CAN. And, uh, yeah, I mean, that is a really expensive feature that you see in a lot of the higher-end scopes. And it's great that O1 has put it in a scope that's reasonably priced for the average home electronics enthusiast. So you can easily see how the bus decode gives you a logic analyzer built into your oscilloscope very nice let's talk about some of these other filter whoops trigger types we have the edge video blah 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 so if you're not familiar i'll give you a quick refresher of what they are the edge trigger triggers when the input passes through a specific voltage level whoops now our video trigger triggers on field or lines for a standard video your slope trigger, it triggers according to the signal's rising or falling speed. Pulse trigger triggers on pulses of certain widths. Now here's a nice one that you don't see in a lot of lower end scopes, and that's the runt trigger. A runt trigger triggers on pulses that pass through one trigger level, but fail to pass through the next one. So it's like a dual level trigger. Then we have windows trigger, and it provides a higher trigger level and a low trigger level. And when the signal passes through the high trigger or the low tri trigger level. So you set a high point and a low point, and it'll trigger when the signal passes through one of them. We have the timeout trigger, and this triggers when the time interval from when the rising edge passes through the trigger level to when the neighboring falling edge also passes. And then we have the nth edge which is really cool and it triggers on the nth edge that appears on the specified idle time these i mean eight trigger modes that's that's i can't imagine a type of signal that you can't pick up with this 
Okay, if we can take a look at some of these hard front panel controls, not to be confused with the soft panel controls here and here that appear with various functions. You see we have our measure controls, and that allows us to bring up different measurements on the screen. We'll get into that. We have our acquire controls, which are very cool. They allow us uh, different modes, um, length, perf mode, interpolation, all that kind of thing is available there. Auto set, we have the utility button, which allows us to set time, date, language, and update the firmware of the scope. And that's something really nice. O1 is keeping these scopes updated. You can go to their website, download an update file, put it on a, a USB stick, pop it in there, press one button, and you're good to go. Then we have the cursor menus, which allow us to do uh, hand measurements as opposed to automatic measurements done by the scope. We can measure uh, time and we can measure voltage and we can measure them both at the same time, which is very nice. We have the auto scale. We have the save for saving waveforms. We have our display, which allows us to set up our brightness, um, the graticules on the screen, whether we're using dots or vectors. And then we have the help menu. Let's take a look at that. So here's the help menu. And you can come down here and scroll through all of this stuff. Say you need to know how to do a pass fail. So you select it with the multi-purpose knob, click it, and I clicked the wrong one, didn't I? All right, return, pass fail. There we go. So now it tells you how to set up a pass fail reading. All of this stuff available on the scope is here. It's just incredible. Now, let's check this out. You're going to get a kick out of this, I think. Okay, so we've got our 75 kilohertz square wave, square wave, sine wave going here on the screen. And over here we have this button, WREC, which is our waveform recorder. We can set it up to record. And boom, channel two is turned off and we are recording this particular waveform. And then we can come back and replay the particular waveform. See it playing, it's going through the waveforms that we've recorded. Very nice. That's a cool feature. I can talk about this for a long time, but the video will just get too long and you all get bored and leave so what do you say we take a look at what's inside so anyway here is the insides of the scope beautiful thanks for watching my review no i'm just kidding let's start by talking about the power supply which is housed in this completely shielded area up here very nice We've got nice heavy cords bringing the power over to the board. Now this section of the board here is the VGA out port, and I can tell that because I had to look up this chip here, which is the Crontel 7026B, which is a VGA encoder, and you know, it goes right there. Hey, look at this. Watch me blow something up. That little connector wasn't quite in there. We've got a Texas Instruments chip. We've got some Samsung memory. I believe we're going to find our FPGAs in our ASICs under this shielding can here. Another one there. There's some more memory. There is our trigger out. There is our composite video out. We've got a relay here. Now this board can take an or this scope can take an optional battery and it's got a spot for it right there. So they've done a really nice job of maximizing space here. Okay, look at that, there's our front end input. So that's the analog section there and then our FPGA must be in that section here. And you can see the on the board shielding with the anti-tracking going on, very, very nice. The design here is 
absolutely top notch. So there we go, all back together and working fine. Um, things I don't like about the scope. I don't like how long you have to hold the soft power button. Um, I don't like that it doesn't have auto sensing probes for your attenuation level. Um, yeah, off the top of my hand, that's really the only two things that I can say I don't like about it, but give me time to learn more about it. We'll come back in six months or so and see what it's like to live with this scope for a while, and uh, we'll talk some more about it then. But until then, thanks for watching. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. A big thanks to all my patrons, and a big thanks to Robin Chan at 01 for sending this scope out to us. Uh, that's just great, man. Thank you so much. We're going to put it to good use here on the channel. That's it. I am out. Peace.